Imagine, imagine you notice there's this little spot in your hand. The color's just a tiny bit different. But you know, we're in quarantine times or you'd have to take off work to go get a doctor to look at it. And it's so tiny, you know, it's probably just a, a little freckle or an age spot, no big deal. Um, you know, if it's on a kid, you know, is it worth having them take off school? School's already so crazy with the hybrid and the virtual learning and trying to homeschool when you've never done it before. Can you afford a day off to go take them to the doctor to look at something that's probably nothing? What about you could lose your job? And there's so many people waiting to jump into your spot because unemployment's so crazy right now with COVID quarantine. Are you gonna go take the day off work and risk it for a little spot in your hand? And and so the spot gets a little bit bigger. And you realize there's no feeling in that spot. It's kind of funny, but still, it's probably just something weird. No big deal. And it's not worth losing your job or taking the day off work. I mean, maybe you're living paycheck to paycheck and you can't afford to lose a day's wages. Maybe you live somewhere that doesn't even have a bus. Maybe you don't have a car. Um, Maybe taking a bus and, you know, staring at your hand the whole time isn't a great idea. People would probably not want to sit next to you. And, and anyway, that bus ride is an hour long and you have to wear a mask the entire time you're on it. And it's a little sketchy riding a bus in some areas, right? And maybe you're in an area and the bus doesn't go the whole way. So you'd have to walk a couple miles first and then catch the bus until you get home. The bus doesn't actually go to your stop anymore, the closest stop is like 20 miles further than it was that morning and you're gonna have to walk the rest of that distance home or try and connive a ride and that's gonna cost you a day's wages to get a ride back home or maybe you try and get in the uber and he notices you're playing with your hand funny and he's like mm, no i don't feel this is safe i think you're gonna need to call someone else um what do you do do you keep going do you wait till it gets worse what is it anyway well this scenario isn't that unusual. Unfortunately, in the world, there are 7 million sufferers of leprosy, and it's on the rise. This time of quarantine, you can easily see how easy it is to get it, let it get past the initial spot. If you don't treat leprosy right away, the condition can be debilitating because that spot where you don't feel anything is going to continue to get worse. You may notice that you start to get ulcers on the bottom of your feet. But they don't hurt, so you don't get them looked at. You think, oh, I'm just gonna try this homeopathic treatment or that, or maybe stay off my feet a little bit more, maybe not walk so much, or maybe some new socks are gonna do it. Maybe that's it, it was just my, my old shoes, and maybe I just need some new sneakers. And maybe that's going to work. And as it gets worse and you start to lose feeling in your hands, you think, ah, do I tell someone or is it all just in my head? Am I just so anxiety ridden? And then you're worrying because what if you tell someone and they think I can't take care of my kids? Do they take my kids away from me? What's gonna happen to us? And so maybe you don't tell someone and it gets worse. And again, not only is leprosy, and you may have heard it called Hansen's disease lately. And what's the difference between leprosy and Hansen's disease? Let's be honest, Hansen's disease is a rich person's disease. It is something that is completely treatable in the early stages. And it's often caught in the early stages. You go, you get, um, what they call it, like a multi-system attack. It's, it's a series of antibiotics that you may need to take for up to a couple years and you're cured. Bingo, and, and no harm done, right? You have a little patch on your hand, eh, whatever. But in the third world or in places where people are more impoverished, doesn't necessarily need to be the third world, right? It can be in the first world, but just in people in lesser conditions. And pretty much it could be anybody during this time of global pandemic which is odd to say, I think global and pandemic, yeah, that's probably a little, a little bit too much there. Um, 
I think leprosy has the danger of becoming more widespread now because people may not get that initial help. And here's the crazy thing. I will tell you this, how it's cured. Multi-drug therapy, that's the the expression I was looking for. It was first introduced in the 1980s. It's anywhere from six months to a year that you would be on these drugs. And it is free of charge worldwide to get this medicine. The problem is getting to it, getting the diagnosis that would get you it. Um, we take it for advantage, you know, a, a middle class family in America. You you take it for advantage that everybody's just going to get it diagnosed right away. You can pop over to a doctor, you know, do a little virtual call. Look at this. No, they can't do that everywhere. Not everybody even has internet where they could do those teledoc things that we're doing right now. And so they end up with leprosy. And it's so ironic because... The treatment is right there and you could be cured of it. The problem is if you don't catch it right away, I mean, you can still get it cured, but it's not going to give you back what you've lost in that time. So as that progression gets worse, um, you could lose feeling in your your hands and feet entirely. And if you can imagine what that's going to be like, um, if you know somebody who's diabetic, who has neuropathy for any a variety of conditions, you know how dangerous that is. Like a little cut or something on your foot can easily, easily lead, lead to gangrene um, and getting that, that limb or part of a limb amputated as well. In leprosy, the body can start to reabsorb some of that tissue. So your fingers and toes can actually even get shorter. Um, It's kind of shocking to a lot of people, and I'm going to intersperse this with photos so that you can see that. I hope you've been noticing that. Now, can people learn to take care of themselves? What can you do, right? So so you've got these debilities, and that's a lot of why they used to have those camps and care centers where they'd send people away. One, because they didn't know how it was transmitted, and honestly, it's still a little bit of a mystery because it's not easily transmitted. They theorize that like 95% of the population is actually immune to it. And they think it may be in water drops. I know we know it comes from bacteria. It's named, it's rod shaped. They've got all that, but how does it happen? Is it by a little bit of, you know, stuff coming out of your mouth, in which case wearing masks right now would help. Um, But it's confusing because it's not like a one and done. You're not around somebody once and you've got it. And bam, you know where you got it from. It's repeated exposure that does it. That's why you hear about saints um, like Marianne Cope, who did not get it, or about Servant of God, John Bradburn, who did not contract it. It's repeated contact, and it is a little mysterious. Again, some people may, a great portion of the population is actually immune and won't get it. Um, and you, you don't really know who you are, so it's a bit of a risk. And so those colonies originally started as a place to quarantine people, but now, especially at Matemwa, where Servant of God John Bradburn spent the last years of his life serving the people who lived there, um, Matemwa especially is becoming a care center. And what does that mean, a care center? They have partnered with LEPRA, L-E-P-R-A, a charitable organization, to become the standard of care, the hub of services for people suffering from leprosy, especially in South, Southern Africa, we'll say, not necessarily South Africa, so Zimbabwe and South. And how that works is leper has come in and they've given people training in both um, diagnosing it, of course, treating it, but also treating some of the debility conditions. Like you could get a specialty kind of footwear that's going to help prevent further damage to your feet. If you've got diabetes or something like that, again, you understand that you're going to need specialized footwear. Well, in rural Africa, that's not so easy to get. And so they're becoming a worldwide center for that. It's going to start down in Africa, but you know, I have dreams that it's going to be a worldwide center for research and innovation in patient care and treatment. And so this is a great collaboration. Again, of course, it's happening with the John Bradburn Memorial Society because people were just so inspired with the level of care he gave to the lepers when he got there. Um, You know, he he went on a day trip with someone and when he got there, the 
The patients all ran and they grabbed bags to put over their heads because they believed and they had been told they were too ugly for anyone to see. And they wore strings around their necks. Theirs didn't have their, their little towel. Theirs had a number on it. They were, they were known by numbers. And John fought this over the time that he was there, that they were people, they were human. They were his brothers and sisters and he cared for them. He didn't just give them the very basics of food and the very basics of care that society dictated because some of these people weren't even from Rhodesia as it was called at the time. Um, they may have been out of country workers who were not allowed back in their country when they contracted leprosy. So some of these were foreigners, they were people of different religions, they were a mix of ethnic groups. And so they did get the very minimum of care and that happened elsewhere. It's not just there folks, let's be honest, it wasn't just there. Um, but when John got there, nope, Bags off, numbers are gone. What's your name? Tell me about you. What do you like? He really brought out the beauty of each person and celebrated them in his poetry as well. You can read them today. Um, but also he took the care. He helped them bathe. He helped them get around if they needed help getting around. Whatever they needed, he made sure they got. They got the right medicines. They got the right food. And if somebody would send him a care package, he would share it. Absolutely. And that's the kind of generosity we're looking for today. World Leprosy Day is January 31st. And we know now that leprosy is a bacteria. It's, it's given to you by a bacteria. Now, who else carries this bacteria? Is it just people? No, there is research going on. There's hypotheses about red squirrels in the United Kingdom, about manga bee monkeys on the Western coast of Africa, and armadillos in the Southeast USA. These animals all kind of carry it. And they're looking now to see, is it ticks that are carrying it as well from animal to animal? Very interesting research. Again, 95% of us aren't going to have it. And so what's the big deal again, you may say? It's that 5%. Currently that 5% that actually have it is over 7 million people and the number is growing and we can help them. Again, the drug is free. All we need to do is get people out there who can diagnose it, who recognize what it is. Even if you're just training people in the community, like in the US, we have people training to use Narcan. So if there's an addict near you, you may be able to give them the Narcan and reverse that overdose and give them some basic help until emergency workers arrive. So we could train people to go out in their communities and know what leprosy looks like and make sure those people go and get the care they need. And that's something just anybody in the community could go and learn to do. So. That's a great thing. People can learn, cobblers can learn this great skill. And again, it's not going to just be useful for people with leprosy. People who are in accidents, veterans, this technology could help so many people, these innovations. And the John Primer Memorial Society does such a wonderful job. They are caring. They are loving. They are not money driven. You're guaranteed um, that any donation or consideration you give is going to go to help people, to help people and build community. Such good work is going on there. They are building a sustainable community where there is water resources. They have water storage tanks that they are building. They're building a well. They have um, fish ponds where they're growing and, and farming their own fish. They have pigs, they have chickens. And in fact, where people used to sneak onto their land and like cut down their trees for firewood, or they would let their cows pasture at Matemwa, and basically even stealing that little bit of grass and greenery that the people had, the people at Matemwa now may be able to offer back to their brothers and sisters in need some of that food. That's the dream. The dream to not only make them a community of caring people, right? Where everybody loves one another, the caregivers as well as the patients, and, and they're, they already have that, but now we're going to say these people who are the cast off and the neglected are going to start caring for the world and they need a small investment to do that. And it's not too much to ask. That's sorry, it just catches my breath sometimes the beauty of it all that these were the neglected and their dream is to keep reaching out and helping more and more people, both those with leprosy and just their brother and sister in need. There's so much innovation coming out of there because it is a community of caring. And they're a model. They are a model of your your ethnic group doesn't matter. Your skin color doesn't matter. You are my brother and sister. I will help you. 
And that's all it needs to be said sometimes. That's all it. Um, and to the glory of God, the John Briver Memorial Society is doing such great work in Matema, helping people with leprosy and really innovating for people with all kinds of disabilities, anybody who feels excluded. You don't feel excluded if you're in Matema. It's such a model for peace and love in the world. And if you know anything about John Bradburn, you may know his tragic end, and that's how he died. He would not leave Matema. They knew this, the Civil War is there, right? And they said, John, you'll have to leave. It's not safe. It is not safe for you, an Englishman, right now in this country. You need to leave. And in fact, some of the young soldiers believed that he had to be a spy because why on earth would an Englishman be helping Africans with leprosy, of all things? Of course, he had to be a spy because no one could love so much. And it was that was the great lie because he did. John Braburn modeled himself after St. Francis who modeled himself after Christ. That love is there. That love is possible. It is for us today to hear that call. It is possible to still live that life, that great love of Christ in our day and age, in the middle of a pandemic. It is absolutely possible to live that great love, friends. We can do that. Will you show your great love? Will you learn from the people at Matemwa? Will you learn about your brothers and sisters in Christ? that we really are all united with one Holy Father who loves and adores us so much and wants us to treat each other as brothers and sisters as Christ treated us as his brothers and sisters, friends. If you have that love in your heart, I'm asking you, I get no kickbacks, I get no fame, I get nothing from them. Even if you just spend five minutes looking at the John Bradburn Memorial Society page, it's at www.johnbradburn.com and learn a little bit about Matemwa, about the people's lives. If you learn a little bit about leprosy there, if you look at some of the beautiful scenes of John's uh, art, I'd say art, his poetry, and they've set some of it with photographs of Africa. If you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling alone, Look at those pictures. Look at those pictures of Africa, the smiling faces of the people there who live in that community as brothers and sisters. You'll be so inspired. If nothing else, friends, I do invite you to do that. Or you can go also go to John Bradburn Poems. And I never remember if it's John Bradburn Poems or John.org or .com. I'll put it in the comments below, friends. But I invite you, do go to johnbradburn.com and just learn a little bit more about leprosy. Learn a little bit more about your brothers and sisters elsewhere in the world. See what you can do to help. And it could be as simple as sending a note or a card, praying for them. Keep them in your prayers. Absolutely. There's so much we can do. If you are someone who is an innovator and you have some great ideas, get in touch with them. Reach out. If you are a physician who could maybe need this training in early diagnosis of leprosy or how to treat some of the, the different disabilities that may come with it, um, please reach out. They would love to work with you. Um, and that's it, friends. God bless you for watching if you've watched this long. And I, I am begging you to at least pray for the John Bradburn Memorial Society and the people at Matema, the beautiful people at Matema, the volunteers, of course, the, the people who live there, the actual community members, and all their families who live nearby. Um, a lot of them live right, right there, right there with them. God bless them, friends. Uh, please keep them all in your prayers. God bless you. In the name of the Father and Son.